Okay, so this lesson I would like to show everyone how to graph inverse trigonometry function properly um, with all, all those like a shifting and a reflecting um, diagrams. All right, so we'll go straight to the um, first question here. First question, mm, example one. We're going to sketch y equals to sine inverse 2x. So how do we sketch this one here? Well, the first thing you need to understand here is um, to sketch a trigonometry, um, inverse trigonometry function, the most important part, which I mentioned before, is about the domain and the range. So before you sketch this, you always need to find the domain and range of the function. All right, and you have to be very careful about finding the domain and range of the function here. All right, now how do we find the domain? Okay, so I hope you still remember the domain of sine inverse x Okay, sine inverse x is between 1 and negative 1. So what's inside here is between 1 and negative 1. But this time, we have 2x. So you have to group them, all right? So you have to group them as a 2x. All right, so 2x is between negative 1 and 1. All right, after you do the calculation, so if you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get x is between negative half <coughs> and positive half. All right, so that's how you find the domain of x. All right, how do we find the... <coughs> oh, sorry. How do we find the range? Well, the range of the function here is the entire function sine inverse 2x um, is actually between minus pi on 2 and positive pi on 2. And there's nothing changed with the range, so we don't have to, you know, we don't have to worry about it. All right. Once we have the domain and the range, we should be able to sketch the function quite easily. So how do we sketch it? Um, you need to draw your horizontal and vertical axis. And after that, look at, you know, just have a look at what's your um, domain and what is the range. <laughs> Based on the domain and range, you start to draw the boxes, which I mentioned previously. All right, so it's between negative half and half. So what you can do is you can increase the scale. Negative half is 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.5. What I can do is I can change that into one centimeter if you want. So I times everything by two. So times here by two, times here by two. So we can just change the, the scale a bit, okay? So that way, um, I'm just going to do label here is one centimeter, which is like negative half. And then three centimeter for pi on 2 and negative pi on 2, all right, pi on 2, negative pi on 2, obviously I didn't do it, um, you know, in the correct scale, okay, make sure you do it properly, all right, draw the boxes, and then a sine inverse function start from the top right hand corner, and it goes to the bottom left hand corner, all right, it's concave up first, and then concave downwards later, so that's how you sketch the sine inverse 2x, so that's pretty easy, um, a very easy question to deal with. All right, now we're going to start to do some hard question where the both domain and range, um, you know, are different. All right, to the original one. All right, so the next example will be sketch y equals to two cosine inverse. Um, let's do half x, and then let's do plus one. All right, so something that's much harder than the previous one. All right, again, first step, I would like to find out what is the domain and then what is the range. You always need to find the domain and range. All right, so how do we find the domain? The domain is everything inside these brackets here, all right, is between 1 and negative 1, like the one we did before. So that becomes half x is between 1 and negative 1. So therefore, x is between negative 2 and 2. <laughs> Okay, now how do we find the range? Well, this time for the range, you have to be very careful. What's this is the original function previously, we call that y, okay? So the y value here, all of the y value here is actually between zero and pi from previous, you know, um, you know, concept we know that inverse cosine function is between zero and pi. So what you need to do is, to solve some algebra calculation. So I'm just going to write down cos inverse half x is between pi and zero. And then you complete this part with the question. So I need to put a two because that's two cosine inverse 
So you times both sides by 2, that gives you 0 and 2 pi. And then you still have to add 1 at the end, so shifting up by 1 unit. So that becomes 2 cosine inverse half x is equal to 2 pi plus 1 and 1 here. Now, obviously, you can do the shifting method if you want to, but I still prefer for the inverse trigonometry function, we uh, don't use shifting method to sketch the curve. You just need to find out what is the domain and what is the range. You should be able to sketch the curve quite easily. All right, so let's start sketch the curve here. Okay, <laughs> so the domain is between negative 2 and 2. So this time, I'm just going to use 2 units. All right, or two centimeters for two and negative two. All right, and um, the range is between one and two pi plus one. Now, two pi plus one is it is going to be a large number. So two times by three is equal to six. Six plus one is seven centimeters. So if you do it properly, you should measure seven centimeters. But I just don't have the space uh, for my diagram here. So I would just going to put two pi plus one here. All right. Now what we need is to draw boxes. Remember, the most important thing is about the boxes. Okay, all right, once you finish that, now remember, for the cosine inverse, I also need to do one more stuff, all right, one more thing. Um, that is to draw the midpoint, and you draw a line through the midpoint between the 1 and 2 pi plus 1. So you need to find this point. Okay, all right. Um, how do we find this point? Okay, how do we find this point? It's pretty easy. Just plus 1 with 2 pi plus 1 and then divide by 2. All right, that's all you have to do. So if you think about it, that becomes 2 pi plus 1 plus 1 over 2. That's how you find the midpoint. Plus the two numbers together, divided by 2. So that gives you 2 pi plus 2 divided by 2, which is pi plus 1. So that point becomes pi plus 1. Once you have that point ready, then you can start to sketch the cosine inverse function. Start from the top left-hand corner, goes to the bottom right-hand corner. So it goes to um, concave up and concave down. All right? The overall shape right, of the graph is always the same. Okay? It doesn't matter if you shift up, down, left, right, or even do reflection. It is still the same. There's no change. All right. Okay. So this is um, the example B. All right. Let's do one more. Let's do one with reflection here. So y is equal to sine inverse minus x. All right, let's just do this refraction. How do we do the refraction? Um, we know that sine inverse um, graph is start from the top right-hand corner to the bottom left-hand corner, right? And if it's do the refraction, when you have a negative x here, I hope you still remember this is reflected by the vertical axis or the, the y-axis. All right, reflected by y-axis. So that means once you know how to sketch the original one, okay, you just have to you know reflect that. So the original one is between one and one pi on two, negative pi on two, and if we just draw the boxes, now remember the original one start from this point and go like this, right? That's the original one, but we need to reflect that, okay? We'll, always the y-axis. So therefore, it will be from this point. And go from the um, the top right, uh, top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. All right, so the graph we're going to start from here, okay, and then it goes through the point zero, and then go back to that point there, okay. So that's how we're going to do the questions. All right, okay. Now, um, so these are the standard curve sketching. All right, standard one. Now I would like to do something that's slightly different, okay. Let's move on to an example two this time. All right, so for an example two, um, I would like to sketch y equals to um, sine inverse x plus cos inverse x. I like to sketch those ones, right? When you're adding two functions together and um, you want to know what is the final graph and what does the final graph look like okay all right so let's sketch that one oops okay sketch that one all right so i'm just going to draw a large diagram this time so you can see what's happening all right all right so firstly they're both 
the domain of both function is minus one and one. I'm just gonna make this one a bit bigger, All right? And then let's call this is pi, and um, halfway is pi on two, and that's zero. Okay. All right. Now my scale is different. Okay. This is not the correct scale, so you'll find the diagram looks a bit weird. Okay. Uh, but when you sketch this, make sure you do a proper scale. All right. Um, so that's minus pi on two. Okay. I'm going to sketch the sine inverse first. All right. Just the sine inverse first. So like a box like this. All right. Sine inverse start from that point and it goes to the point here. So this is a sine inverse graph, which is pretty easy to sketch now. And I'm just going to use a different color um, to sketch the cosine inverse. Because remember, we're adding the two functions together. So I'm just going to draw the box again. And the cosine inverse starts from that point, all right, and goes down to the point here. All right, so now we have these two functions. So that is the cos inverse. And then uh, that function here is the sine inverse. Now, I want to plus these two functions together. How do we plus them? <laughs> All right, so to plus the functions, we usually just plus the point by point, right? Do you remember last time I would talk about, you know, if you want to add the two functions together, we try to plus the point by point. So how do we plus the point? Well, we find the special points. So that's a special point here. If you look at that point, that's equal to zero. Zero plus pi on two is pi on two. So that would be my first point. And I'm using purple for the resulting graph, okay? Next, uh, I'm looking for another zero point. That's another zero plus another pi on two, which is pi on two again. All right, now keep going. You will have that point is pi, so that point is pi. And then this point here is minus pi on two. And so pi, sorry, that is pi. Let's try it again. This is minus pi on two. So pi plus minus pi on two is pi on two. Okay, so that tells you this point is still pi on two. So what you can see here is if you try to add this function together, they're equal to a straight line, okay? It is just going to be a horizontal line with the domain that is um, from negative one to one. And that is equal to pi on two. Okay, so this is a very important feature that you do need to know. That actually is a formula. So please remember this formula here. Sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi on 2. All right, um, we can also use the algebra to prove that. But, you know, for this lesson, I'd just like to show you how to prove it graphically. And in the future, I'd like to show you how to prove it using algebra for this identity. All right, this works only for x between negative 1 and positive 1, all right? Okay, and in the future lessons, I would like to prove to you why this, you know, this is working and uh, how we use the algebra to prove that. Um, mm, you know what, actually, how about we just prove it today, all right? So it's just easier. You have an algebra proof and you have the um, graphical proof. Yeah, I'll just do that, okay? All right, so how do we prove this? Proof. Sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi on 2. All right. How do I uh, prove that? The first step, you're going to let a equals to cosine inverse x. You can let a or b or whatever. Okay. So just let a equals to cosine inverse x. So that's a. So then the cos a is equal to x. All right. Cos a is equal to x. And then where a is between 0 and pi because that is the range. Do you remember? That is the range of the original cos inverse x function. All right, okay. So once we know that, okay, then what we can do is we can change this, okay, into the sine function. All right, remember, sine bracket pi on 2 minus a, that's called a complementary angles, right? That is still equals to x. All right, that is still equals to x because that is equal to cosine a. Okay, so therefore sine inverse x is equal to pi on 2 minus a. So therefore sine inverse x plus a, so you're just moving this a to the right hand side, um, is equal to pi on 2. All right, now 
we we'll just have that A. What's A? A is, where's A? This A is here. So now what we just have to do is substitute the numbers in. So that gives you sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi on 2. And that's how you prove it. Okay? That's how you prove it. <laughs> All right. Um, now let's move on to the next example. All right, so the next example I'd like to show you is about example three. I'd like to um, talk about uh, the symmetrics, all right? Whether well, it's a you know the symmetrics of the um, inverse functions, right? Inverse trigonometry functions. So we will start with this one here: y equals to sine inverse x. And then, um, is y equal to sine inverse x an odd function or is that an even function? All right. Now, if we look at the actual diagram, a sine inverse function look like this, right? That's what a sine inverse function look like. <laughs> yep. Um, this is an odd function. Okay, so sine inverse x is an odd function because it's a point symmetry with that point here. Okay, with the origin. So, um, sine inverse function, y equals to sine inverse x, all right, is odd function, which means sine inverse minus x is equal to minus sine inverse x. Very important. Another identity that you sort of need to memorize, okay? <laughs> All right. The next one is, what about the tangent inverse x? Now, what does the tangent inverse x looks like? Okay? So that's what a tangent inverse x looks like. Okay? It looks like another odd function because it's reflection by the, you know it's reflected by this point again all right by the origin all right so yes y equals the tangent inverse x is also an odd function so tangent inverse x negative x is negative tangent inverse x okay and then that becomes another identity here all right okay now, what about the tangent? Okay, the tangent graph. So, tangent inverse. Y equals to, not tangent, sorry, oh, what I'm talking about, cosine inverse x. All right, what does cosine inverse x look like? So cosine inverse x looks like this. This is cosine inverse x. It is not an odd function, all right? And in the same time, it is not an even function. So, it's neither odd or even. Okay, that's a that's not right. Okay, but there's another identity you do sort of need to remember: um, cos inverse x plus cos inverse minus x is actually equals to pi. All right, now what I want to do is leave this question for you to do. All right, how do we prove this? How do we prove that? Okay, why? You know, cos inverse x plus cos inverse negative x is pi. So I'd like to you to do this, okay, to prove it. You can use either graphical way to prove it, like what I did before. So you can, you know, sketch cos inverse x, and then you sketch cos inverse minus x. Or you can use the algebra method, you know, to prove that. But I'm going to leave this one for you to do. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move on to the example four. This is much harder than the previous examples. We're going to do the composite function. So we're going to sketch um, the trig function combined with inverse trig function, all right? The composite function. We're going to start with those one, the simple one first. So how do we sketch y equals to sine bracket sine inverse x? Y equals to cosine cosine inverse x, and y equals to ten and ten inverse x. All right. So how do we sketch that? Um, first thing you need to understand here is if you use algebra, okay, to simplify all of these, the answer will be y equals to x, y equals to x, y equals to x. It's like when you know, it, it, because you've got sine inverse and sine, they sort of cancelled out, right? So you get it y equals to x, y equals to x, y equals to x. All right, but the only difference, all right, between those functions is if you just um, sketch y equals to x like this graph here, all right, and it continues forever. Then you sort of made a mistake not considering the original domain and range. All right, that is the problem because if you use algebra to simplify your expression um, during the process of a simplification, um, 
there is some important concept or some important like in detail of the function is sort of like lost during the process of simplification. So what you need to do is try to simplify it and then look at the actual domain and the range. All right. So we're going to do that first. All right. So let's just have a look at the sine inverse x, this one here. What is the domain of this function? Now, the domain of this function is actually between 1 and negative 1. Right? Between 1 and negative 1. So that means if I want to sketch this graph, also this is y equals to x, right? y equals to x. But what we need to do is we need to set up a domain here. So we need to stop the function at a point there and a point there. Alright? So therefore, we only have the graph starting from that point and finishing at the point here. This is very important. Alright, so we're going to remove all the extra bits. Okay? And that's what a graph work should look like. Alright? Next is, um, how about the, the cosine one? Alright, same thing. The cosine function, if we look at the domain here, it is between 1 and and negative 1 again, so you are going to get the same graph like the previous one. <coughs> Alright, so it is still, um, still a straight line, but we need to apply the restriction. So the restriction is positive 1 and minus 1. Alright, so start from that point and finish the point here. That's what a graph looks like. Alright, and of course you need to remove the extra parts. Alright, so the last one is the tangent. Tangent is slightly different, alright? So tangent is special. What is the range or domain of the tangent? The domain of the tangent is all real. All real x. Alright, you can choose any x. So that means with the tangent in um tangent bracket tangent inverse, you're gonna have a proper straight 45 degree line here. And it extends both sides. Okay? Alright. So that's, a, that's an easy one. All right, the harder question is what happens, all right, what happens um, if we switch the order? Okay, so this is going to be a bit crazy now. So what happens if we, instead of doing sine bracket sine inverse x, okay, how about I do all right, sine inverse bracket sine x? All right, this is the crazy part. How do we sketch that one? Okay, how do we sketch this one? All right, so to sketch this one here, uh, I would like to show you a method where um, you use the compass function, okay, method to sketch the curve. All right, so the first step what I need to do is have a look at this graph here, okay? Let's work out what is the domain and what is the range. All right, this time, the domain, I'm going to pay attention to the sine x because what that's what's inside x, right? So the domain of sine x, okay, this sine x, right, entire sine x is between negative 1 and 1 because that's the domain of sine inverse x. <laughs> but if you look at the sine x function, the sine x function is every value of sine x function is always bet you know, between negative 1 and 1. So therefore, x is all real. Because that applies to every okay x. If you substitute any x inside, um, the value is always between a, one, a negative one and one. All right. Now, what about the range? The range will have to pay attention to the sine inverse x. So it doesn't matter if you inside is sine x again. But that's okay. And the sine inverse x is between negative pi on two to positive pi on two. All right. Now, how do we sketch the graph, right? How do we actually sketch the graph? What I'd like to do here is to show you the method where I'm going to use something called a compass of function sketching skills to sketch the graph, okay? All right, so I'm going to draw two graphs here. I'm just going to draw a slightly better way. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the sine function first. All right, oops, that's not right. So this is the sine function. <laughs> All right, this is the sine function. And then I'm going to sketch the inverse sine function. All right, inverse one sine function. So I've got that, this. And this is the inverse sine function. Okay. And instead of you writing x and y, I'm going to give you a different um, letter here. Okay. So 
Now, um, what I want to do is I'm going to let a to be sine x, okay? Let a to be sine x. So therefore, this is my x axis, and that's the a axis. And then I am going to sketch the um, sine inverse a. So that becomes a, and that becomes the y. All right, so hopefully you understand what's happening here. And this is y equals to sine inverse a, and here's um, a equals to sine x. Our job is to combine these two graphs into one graph. Okay, into one graph. And that becomes x and y. All right. So what do we do? We're going to pick points. Let's pick a point, all right? Let's pick one x is equal to zero. Let's pick that point. So I'd like everyone just pay attention here. x and one x equal to zero. Now, when x equals to zero, what is the value of a? A is also equal to zero. So once you get that value, we're going to go back to A. When A is equal to zero, what is the value of Y? So have you noticed the way I do the questions here? I start from X. I try to work out what is A. And then if I go to the next graph, I try to work out what's Y. That's the process. So you start from X, pick a point from X, all right, work out what's A, and then substitute another, into another graph, work out what is the Y. So pick a point here, that would be the point here, of course. All right, pick a point here, work out what's A, and come back to here, look at that point, look at the Y, and finally pick the points there. All right, so when I pick X equals to 0, A is equal to 0, and when A equals to 0, Y equals to 0. So that would be my first point. And let's move on, all right? Now, the process, you can generalize the process later, all right? So you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to um, find, let's just say, um, 10 millions of points to, for you to sketch, right? So the next point you're going to pick is that point here. All right, that is pi on 2, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. You're looking at that point. If I pick pi on 2, so if that's pi on 2, okay, if that's pi on 2, then the y, um, a value is, is what? Is equal to 1. Okay, it's equal to 1. Then from here, where is, what is the point 1 here? All right, so when a equals to 1, what is the value of y? y is equal to pi on 2. All right, so that means this point, my second point, will be the point here. All right, to connect these two points, I'm going to use a straight line. Because remember, if you use a, calc um, you know, if you use a calculator, if you use the algebra, they are going to uh, you. You're going to get x equals to y equals to x or y equals to minus x. This kind of you know graph. So it's going to be a straight line. All right, keep going. So now let's have a look at this. So now the point is start from the one and go back to the zero. Look at the y value. Okay, y values go back from one to zero, and x values from pi on two to pi. So x values from pi on two to pi. And the y values go from 1 to 0. And then the y value go from 1 to 0. For a, 1 to 0 means it's going from pi on 2 to 0. So it's going to go from pi on 2 to 0. So that gives you the second part of the graph. Okay? And if you keep going, all right, if you keep going, so now it goes to the negative 1 region. All right, so that point is 3 pi on 2, but it goes to a negative region. So that becomes negative 1. Negative 1 is um, minus pi on 2. So you go to minus pi on 2, and that will be the point, and they go down to the point here. Okay, now because sine, in, uh, sine x is in a periodic function, so therefore this pattern is going to all right, follow. So you're going to follow that pattern, and it goes down, go up, Go down again, follow the pattern like this. That's how you sketch a sine inverse sine x. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, yep, um, it's not a definite and it's not an easy question to do. Um, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, so what I suggest you is try to do this question um, when you have the time so you can sketch y equal to cos inverse cos x. All right, so try to sketch that question here. Now, without looking at your textbook and see if you know what does the graph looks like okay all right so i hope you um, have learned something this in this lesson it does take time for you to absorb all the knowledge here 
and uh, make sure you go to the textbook and maybe you know watch my video one more time um yeah okay thank you everyone